Good evening, good morning, and good afternoon from whichever time zone you are joining us from. Um, my name is Timelen Hala Juan, and um, I have the privilege of being the host for this two day virtual training program. And um, I welcome you all. Our speakers are actually here, and um, they are ready to dish out from the wealth of knowledge. And I can assure you, you have the best time here. Hey. As a matter of fact, to um, acquaint us once again, the topic for the program is classroom engagement for improving learning outcomes. And I must tell you, no doubt about it, you have something to learn. You have something to gain and you have something to to, to jot that in one week or the other. So, with much ado or nothing, um, I would like us to have a quick introduction of um, everyone here tonight. Um, as Elia said, my name is Timlei Olajuwon, and um, I expect to, to have more understanding about what classroom engagement is all about. And yeah. as a matter of fact, I look forward to gaining um, practical oriented knowledge about um, engaging students also within the within the classroom from our our speaker tonight. So ladies and gentlemen, um, I will call our names and I will appreciate um, us to unmute ourselves uh, to introduce ourselves and has as well give us what is our expectation for tonight. So let me start from Mary Han Omolu. Mary Han, can you please unmute yourself and tell us a brief about a brief introduction about you and what we expect in tonight's program. Thank you. Thank you, Simulayan. Good evening everyone. My name is Mary Ann. And I'm very, very happy to be in this meeting today. And I hope at the end of this meeting, I'll be able to identify uh, some of the tools that are helpful for educators to better, um, you know, educate the pupils in classroom and which would lead to a better um, learning outcome. So I'd like to be able to identify such tools and if possible educate other educators I have around me. Thank you. All right, thank you so much. That's interesting. And uh, we have a good expectation for tonight's program. And Joy Peter, are you there? Joy Peter, if you are there, can you hold with yourself? And oh, she's no more here. Um, Mr. Ruben, Mr. Ruben, can you hear me? I can hear you. Yeah, please kindly introduce yourself and tell us what your expectation is for tonight's program. All right. Good day, everyone. My name is Ruben Edino. I, I am here with full of expectation that uh, I will be developed uh, educationally as a teacher so that I have a lot to share with the students, the learners under my care. And uh, I trust God that this will come true tonight. Thank you very much. All right, thank you, fantastic. I, I believe all participants also are equally waiting and um, they are excited to be part of today's program and um, they are waiting for every of the beats. They will tap you, and I must be realistic with you, they will tap you, they would suck you, they want to learn every bit of the knowledge you are willing to dish out tonight. Um, Mr. Desmond? Yes, please. Please, can you tell us a bit, a bit about you and um, what's your expectation for tonight? Well, um, my name is Desmond by name, an educational consultant. I've actually been into this field for over 14 years now. I'm still counting. 
Okay, um, this evening, I expect so much from each and every one of us. And um, I believe by the end of the class today, we have a brief focus to go back to our various classrooms and be able to relate back to our learners and then um, get the best out of them. I think that's my piece of um, expectation tonight. That's awesome. Thank you very much. Straight away to Alliance mm -hmm. is Mr. Alliance. Of, are you there? Can you unmute yourself? Oh, I don't think so. What of um, Ellen? Is Ellen there? Okay. Fumilayo, are you there? Oh, okay. Um, Dorcas? All right. Then um, Uchena. I can see you just joined us. Uchena, are you there? Yes. All right, fantastic. So you met us uh, at a very good time. And um, we are still doing an introduction. Right. Mm -hmm. Laya, can you mute yourself? All right, thank you. Uchena, as I was saying, you met us at a very good point in time and we are still doing introduction. Please, can you introduce yourself and um, what's your expectation for tonight? Okay, my Uchina. name is Uchina Johnson. My name is Uchina Johnson. I'm also an educator. So I'm here to learn. So afterwards, I know. Thank you. All right, fantastic. Straight away because of the time, Ellen, I can see you are there. Yeah, please tell us what's your expectation for not for tonight. Um, I will go ahead and, and uh, I'm also here to learn to act what I know as a teacher. All right, fantastic. Um, nice to I be here. It's a pleasure to have you here. I think we need to move fast because of our time. Um, introduction can actually come in um, afterwards. Mm -hmm. So quickly, we'll be having um, a quick one, which is um, my, my Ben Foundation at a glance. So would be sharing with you what my Ben Foundation is. As you all know, my Ben Foundation is the organizer for this particular program. And um, we have a lot we do. And one of the key things we do is, uh, one of the projects that we do is what we are having tonight, teachers training program. Although this is coming virtually, but then this is one of the great initiatives the organization has been doing over time. And um, quickly, I think because of the absence of um, someone here tonight, I will um, quickly be taking that. So um, the vision of Macbeth Foundation is to um, raise community where quality, equitable, and inclusive education is accessible to all in a conducive and safe environment, irrespective of geographical location and socioeconomic status. Over the past years, yourself, Ellen, Desmond, thank you. Welcome. Thank you for joining us. All right. As I was saying, McBain Foundation is with a mission to bridge the gaps between rural and urban education across Africa and we are doing this by using creative and innovative tools through specific partnerships and collaboration. Um, without wasting our time, I would like you to understand that our work focus on advocacy, community engagement, dialogue, interventions, and empowerment. We have a whole lot of volunteers across the board, and um, we have people that have work with us engaging communities. And one of the key things we use um, as a means of engaging communities is the use of dialogue. And with this, we, we have a sense of um, communication and partnership to say collaboration with people within each community and as a way of focusing on providing quality education for children and young ones. Now, what is teacher training program? 
like, at, like I said earlier, Sharp Training Program is one of the projects that we organize at McBain Foundation. And one of the key things that um, brought or prompted us to do this is to enhance continuous professional development of teachers. And sorry, who is that? Sorry for the break of teachers and um, also uh, we, we our focus is to expose um, them to seasoned educational consultants just like we are doing today who can mentor who can teach them and who can teach out there from the weight of their knowledge in building them to becoming um, more effective in their educational work as a teacher and then with this we believe tonight's program, also would be one of the key ways to which we would impact and then we would add value to the teachers or any education um, educator that actually is participating in today's program. So we believe participants would have at least a reason to go home with one key important thing about education, classroom learning and <clears throat> basic tools that can, that can be used in order to develop um, themselves and also in order to develop the, the, the students they are actually um, teaching. So on this note, I say again, welcome to everybody that just joining us. I can see Vado, Rachel, Honorable Jos, and many other like that. So with much ado or nothing, we would um, move straight away um, to the first lecture. The time is fast paced already. So we'll move straight away to the first lecture. And um, this will be taken by one of the season, um, one of the season professional educator. And um, it's no other person but Mr. Ruben Edino. Mr. Ruben Edino um, is here. But then before I give um, the floor to him, I would um, quickly read, um, a brief, of what, a brief of who he is. Actually, you might not know him, but I, I have read his biography and I have at least seen a bit of him. So he's here tonight loaded. So ladies and gentlemen, I present to you, Mr. Ruben. Um, Mr. Ruben is a citizen professional with in-depth understanding in educational consultancy services, coaching and training technique. Mr. Ruben possesses over a decade of experience in education, musicianship, musicianship, training, presentation, organization development and management experience. Ladies and gentlemen, he has acquired vast experience from schools where he taught and creatively initiated learning as individual space with different strategies. It develops mathematics teachers with the ability to teach mathematics creatively to learners with different learning styles using fun, affordable and real life teaching aids. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Ruben holds Bachelor in Mathematics from Armando Bello University NC in mathematics slash computer from FC Hizaria. He also holds professional certificates in world-class maths Asian teaching practice from University of Southampton. Ladies and gentlemen, he has professional certificates on the principles underlying the use of national and international curriculum. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Ruben is a CEO, Queen Essence, Tutors and Solutions. Please, with a clap innovation, you can do that. You can still do that. You can a clap innovation. And um, with a waving sticker, like you can still do a sticker here. Um, ladies and gentlemen, welcome with me, Mr. Ruben Edino. Thank you very much. Mr. Ruben, you have the floor. Mr. Ruben, you are still muted. 
Good evening. Good day, everyone. I, I want to thank God and thank everyone for this opportunity to share the little I know with all of us. We are in a noble profession where we feel that our effort may not be fully rewarded here, but I have seen that it's a worthy cause, a place we will develop ourselves to better ourselves, to better the young ones, the, the generation after us, and a place to work for God on earth. I realize that the world is turning to something else and God has strategically positioned us as teachers to develop these ones. So it's a privilege to be a teacher. It's a privilege to have all of us around as colleagues. And it's a privilege to share the little I know with us this evening. Thank you very much. I want to thank the Marben Foundation for this opportunity. I am not taking it for granted. And I truly hope and think that we will all have something to take home. It may not be something new per se, but it will be a conglomeration of ideas put together for over the years of experience, from over the years of experience. And uh, some of the few researches we have done so far and I want to use this opportunity to say that I want to learn from all of us too, though the time is so limited, but we'll look for how we will make proper use of it. Thank you all. And I am truly grateful for the opportunity once again. Thank you very much. All right, uh, let's go straight to the point. But before that, I will be sharing the, I'll be sharing my uh, file with all of us so that we'll go through it, my slides. In these 40 minutes, we'll be looking at some pertinent things, though very simple, but important to our engagement around classroom that will bring a very, very result-oriented uh, outcome. As we all know from the topic, we, we know that we'll be looking at uh, engaging classroom engagement for an outcome that is very relevant to our days that will make education worth going out for, that will make education not look like a scam the way some have looked at it. So we will shortly go through it and uh, I will ex expect our questions so that the aspect I may not be able to touch, we will answer them and God will help us. Thank you very much. Let me go straight to the sharing of our uh, the, the. Just a minute. All right. Okay. You can see the slide now. You can see the slide, right? Yes. All right, sir. Perfectly yes, designed. Please. All right. Good. Classroom engagement for improved learning outcome. This is our topic. Uh, this topic is very interesting to me. If, uh, it's something I've consciously been working on, on how I can better the students under my care. And I've, I've looked for opportunity to share this idea with many people that care to listen to me. Now, this is, uh, we have classroom, we have engagement, and we have learning outcome. All right, but let's just go briefly through the, my introduction. I won't waste time. Then we will localize it to a particular topic, a subject yeah. that, that I teach. We will look for, you can help me mute your speakers now until um, you, you will want to say something. Sorry, right? please. Um, if, if, if you have questions, 
Okay. You have questions, please write down your questions. It will be answered by our speaker, the hand of his um, So please mute yourself. Mute yourself. We only want to hear our speaker speaking right now. Please, Milayo, can you please mute yourself? Thank you very much. All right. Uh, the component that make education of any great nation enviable is the quality of their curriculum, the quality of their teachers, the connectedness and bonding activities between teachers and learners. Now, if you, I want you to take note of the bonding activities between teachers and learners. This is what we call classroom engagement. The word connect, the word bonding is something that all of us are familiar with. And this bonding and connectivity happens between the teachers and the students or the learners as the case may be. So this is what people celebrate in any, any country's education. I've been privileged to study some countries education, people that we celebrate. These four things, the teachers, the curriculum, the, the engagement in the classroom, that means the classroom activity and the learning environment are the key things that distinguish any good educational system. Hello, everyone. Uh, we are so sorry. I think our speaker is having. And the one um, using uh, connectedness make students. Student. Okay. Okay. Hello. Yeah, we can hear you. All right. All right. The nature of this uh, activity are free to creatively, and this engagement should reflect 21st century interdisciplinary teams, learning creativity and innovative skills, working with technology, information, and media, and life and career skills. So because of this, the whole effort must come from teachers to make sure these students, these pupils are not just coming to school, looking as if they are fulfilling all righteousness. There's a whole lot they need to know. There's a whole lot that must be done. And there's an outcome that is required from every activity carried out in class through teachers in, connect, in connection with the learners. So I truly want us to pay full attention to some of the things we'll be sharing. It's an important thing. This, so if you will ask me, this is all about schooling. All right? This is all about schooling. Any school that must pass through the learner and the learner could defend it, there must be quality engagement that has uh, shown in his character, in his behavior. Actually, we know learning to be a, a change in character, a change in uh, behavior, all right? Are we listening? We are following, sir. All right, all right sir. We are listening, sir. Uh, all right. So now let's quickly look at meaning of classroom engagement. All we must have read from several authors, several authorities. It's in the, you could go to Google and check them up. But I found out and I decided to bring something that we could relate with, simple enough for us to connect with. And uh, it is simply the connectedness and the bonding activities between students and teachers that enhance academic success. 
whatsoever a teacher will do, any activity that bond them, that connect them, that involve the learners, that will bring or enhance academic success and foster the full understanding of the concept and the application of those concepts in real life situation. So by this definition, if all you are doing is helping them to pass their exam alone, you have not fully engaged them. And if they are using it in their real life and they are not passing exam, you have not engaged them. So the, the, this engagement has like two way thing. They must pass their exam, they must pass their test, and they must use this knowledge to solve their personal problems. We, in this part of the world, may not be privileged to have enjoyed this, uh, this uh, kind of education. But thank God for such training that is coming up and many training that has been going on before now, that we will know that we are not just preparing to pass our common entrances, our junior WIEC, our senior WIEC, or our jump. This knowledge should translate into a problem solving skill so that my neighbor should feel that I am learning a skill in the classroom. So if this happens, you realize plenty stuff that people will start enjoying from education. In that case, our education will not be considered a scam. There's this statement I've been hearing. I'm, I'm not sure whether you've heard that or, or not. They say the education is a scam. Someone that have not been to school will walk up and do something tangible. Maybe he does some gimmicks and, but if we engage ourselves in reality with what we know and engage these children with some of the facts, topics, subjects that we know in class and tell them that this is what you will need it for, education will be useful to whoever learns it. So the law will help us. All. And uh, as we keep going on, we will move to that point that children will be emotionally engaged and become aware that each class is an opportunity to learn a skill for our life situation. This is all the engagement is all about. So now what is the outcome? The outcome now is that all that these children have learned, the, student, the learners have learned, should be translated into a proper use to enhance their life and more effectively contribute to the society. So that when they come for a presidency, maybe they want to be a president, no one will question their character. When they want to be the governor of the state, no one will question who they are. They, when they are going to be an engineer, we will not be afraid of their, their house falling. We will not be afraid of a doctor killing. So when we engage them correctly, the outcome will translate into the reality of a quality man, a quality woman. And I truly hope and think that with all these things we are learning, we'll translate them to a point where every child, every student, every learner under us will be transformed with such an outcome. Can I get an amen to that? Yes, amen. All right. Now, it is important to know that while a teacher works on these essentials, he should not be bound by a sequence of topics. This may look like an aberration. So you may ask me, if you say we should not follow sequence of topics, why did the curriculum give us a scheme? As important as the scheme are, from my years of experience, I have realized that scheme, some of these schemes, they were well arranged for our exams to sequentially understand them. But I have found out, most especially with my, my subject I know, mathematics, there are some things that are not so linking and the reality of them are not so bare when you follow the scheme. So the teacher is at that liberty to creatively rearrange so that there will be sequence, hierarchy, and linkage, linkage of this uh, outcome that you are looking out for. If I want a child to behave in a certain way, I know that I have to sit down to sequentially arrange this. If the topic I am to teach will not give me that, I will link the other topic, I will bring the other topic, and I will join them to a point that I will develop the totality of this student. So that having mastered the act, he will still pass the exam and he will love the learning. Listen to me, he will master the, the subject, he will pass the exam and he will love the learning. This is not the case we are having right now. Most students are not loving what they are learning. I have heard questions several times. 
we keep looking for X, looking for Y. Where do we use it? And I'm sure many of us as teachers now will ask such questions. I'm sure it's not even that mathematics alone. There are many subjects that students keep talking about. Where do I apply this knowledge? The reason is that the engagement in the classroom were not vividly explained. It's so that the teacher were, were not fully informed of the involvement or the importance of this subject we are learning, or it was poorly delivered. But no one here today, after this, will be involved in such endeavor. I want us to know that we are in, an, uh, we are in a profession that we can make or mar people. We can raise or pull down people. And what we, in, we, we engage them in will determine their raising, their rising. What we engage them in will determine their falling. I'm sure the latter will not be our portion. I'm a Christian, so I would prefer to use in Jesus' name. All right, so let's move further. Right now, I want to limit my, move my uh, engagement with you with mathematics, which is my core competence. And I, I'm sure you will be, even if you are not a math teacher, one way or the other, you've seen an environment to dispense this kind of knowledge. So when engaging learners in subject like mathematics that has been tagged abstract and vague, you must take note of the following. What is the first thing to take note? The teaching should focus on mastery and not just the preparation for test. The teaching should focus on mastery and not just a preparation for test. Why do I say that? I've been in school. I passed through primary, sec primary secondary school, NCE. I went to university and I've done so many other trainings. There's a difference between what I've learned from my primary school to my university days and some few things I've done somewhere outside this country. What I found out is that any training that is focused on mastery will deliver more than the training that is focused on test. You will get a certificate, people will celebrate you, but you may not be able to prove that you have learned that. Can we hear me? Even one, one person should just signify that you are listening. Yes, we can hear you. All right, you. All right. Thank, you. Thank, you. thank you very much. Now, the fact is that we should master on, we should focus on mastery. How do we do that? We'll be doing that, I'll explain that later. Secondly, it should be a development of real life skill that solve problems. You have paid thousands of Naira to attend a training of uh, one hour. Why did you do that? You recognize that that money paid will deliver itself in no distant time. But can we confidently say to our secondary school students right now that all that we are teaching them in class can deliver a skill that will help them immediately. Now, we may argue that, but the way our educational, educational system before now has been structured, it is structured for tests. I've been privileged to study the, uh, the educational system of Singapore. And one thing I noticed with them is that they are training you to master a skill that solves a problem. Our own can just be written in a book but the interpretation of our engagement shows that we are preparing them for tests. Because of that, you start looking for question papers. Because of that, you start looking for who has done it before. Because of that, you start looking for steps to help you pass the exam. And those books sell more than the book that talks about mastery. The narrative has to change. Must teach mastery, not just preparation for tests. Am I saying that test is not good? No. Test prepare you for promotion, but mastery gives you a life skill that solve problems. And people that solve problems are the great men and women that we recognize in our society, all right? If just the educational, this thing would make people great, professors would have been the richest people in the world, but that is not the case. What we need to know is that while preparing for mastery, we are knowing how to write the test. It should be a development for life skill, and it should be a development that should be linked with any celebrated skills or their favorite activity. I've realized that children love to play game. 
can we can we just step down a little, understand those games, and see the relevance of our topics with their games? You realize that children will run to come and meet us and learn more. I have tried this with many of my mathematical topics. I have seen some games, most especially the ones that they are playing with system now, they are linked to mathematics. Their builders are even mathematics. I have to let them know that these things they are learning is built by mathematicians. And if you want to play it well, you will use the mathematical understanding to play them. Most games I've understood in life are mathematical. All right, so if I involve my mathematical skills in their playing of game, I will not struggle to teach them what I want to teach them with what they love. So we should link our, for this mathematics to go far and wide and get them like the topic, it must be linked with what they like. And when you are doing this, the evaluation of their understanding should be instant. Don't teach children and wait for tomorrow to test them. Because if you feel they have understood and they have not understood, understood it, you could change the strategy. And I'll be showing you a whole lot of strategy this evening as God helps us. Remember that teaching for mastery is all inclusive. As the learner will always perform at their best during the test. Anyone that masters a particular thing will pass in that exam. So don't teach for test, teach for mastery. All right, so how to engage learners mathematically in class? Mathematics in this part of our world is already looking like a masquerade that is psychologically bullying huge number of people. Any witness in the house? Is there anyone that has been bullied by mathematics before? <laughs> I'm sure many of us. I used to be bullied by mathematics till some, yeah, some of yeah. this. Is, all right. All our effort here is to unmask mathematics, to make it fun and entertaining, to make it tangible and real, to make it a tool for solving personal problems. So let's check those strategies up. All right. Do you know that vocabulary and synonyms play a whole lot of roles? I'm talking of the engagements now. I want you to take note. This is one of our number one engagements. Anything you are going to teach, every vocabulary around it will be understood. And it's going to be cross uh, sectional because when learning math, you are learning English. While learning, I've learned re recently that you can use a particular subject to teach all the subject. English is one of them, mathematics is one of them. So one of the way to understand math mathematics is the use of vocabulary and synonyms. Don't be fast to conclude that you understand what I meant. I wanted to say. Do you know that we can creatively encourage the full understanding of mathematics using the vocabulary and the root words? Some of the jaw-breaking words we use in mathematics have simple meaning and they have synonyms. When you create room for exploration of the synonyms of the concept under discussion, you see children, you ask them for the synonyms of what you are talking about. For example, you just decided to call the word parallel. When you hear parallel, it's a very big word. So is there any root word relating to parallel? Let's check them up. Do you have dictionary? Say yes, check it. What does parallel mean? There are some good dictionaries that have broken some words down. They tell you the root word. They tell you where it comes from, the origin and all of those. I have found out that if you invest your time in showing children the vocabularies that are involved, the full meaning and full understanding of those vocabularies and the synonyms, some other words that still explain those words, it will make this, the, the concept very, very simple. And everyone can talk it. Everyone can say it. Everyone can discuss it. Everyone can sing it. But what has been happening now is that all our education as teachers centered. I come to the board. I just write my topic and I blab. It may be correct thing, but these children have a whole lot of things disturbing them. If you will not engage them with some realities, like finding the vocabularies and synonyms, it may not be fully understood. So let's talk, look at what I'm talking about. There are some words we call etymolo the etymologies and root words of some math words. When used, it brings a whole lot of understanding. You are engaging these children, not just in mathematics, the root meaning, where it the whole word came from. 
For example, have you heard the word equi, equilateral before? As you hear the word equi, it means equal, and lateral means side. So anytime I, I call equilateral triangle, they have seen the triangle and they have seen the word equi and they know lateral. There's that connection that comes easily. Are you listening to me? So if I decide to pick the root word, I break them down. You, you hear the word equidistance. On a very good, good day, equidistance is a big word, but when they know the meaning of equi and they know what distance is, they join this word together. So when I'm saying it's equidistance from this, either I'm talking to a primary one child or a SS3 student, this whole thing make a whole lot of sense and children will be following you with such engagement. Now, I will leave this material with, I'll share the material with us and we can even find them when you want to teach any word. Look for the root word of any word you want to teach and you engage these children. You teach them how to speak English, you teach them how to discuss mathematics and you teach them the root meaning so that it will not just be a scam or you are wasting your time using big, big grammar that are full in mathematics. I'm sure you can witness that with me. The next thing is vocabulary, uh, uh, synonyms. For example, the simple addition, you can use many words to talk about addition. With this understanding, even if you form English in word, in word problems, no child will struggle to understand what the word is talking about. So what I do personally, when I'm going to a class, I sit down and this whole thing will be done during my preparation. Of course, we know what we call lesson plan. It's not writing, not all those things to write, we call lesson plan. Your ability to plan the lesson is what we call lesson plan. We could even plan the lesson without so writing all those things we submit for marking, all right? And I have decided to plan my work more than writing lesson plan. So if I am planning my lesson, I will take my time to work on these vocabularies and I will list all of them. I even allow them to use their now, engage them. What do you think suppression means? You are talking to your younger brother and he's asking for the word suppression. He will just raise the hand. Do you mean when I am taking something, removing something from the other one? Does it mean when I am decreasing? You'll be surprised to know what they know about what you are teaching. And they will be fully engaged. They will not struggle to follow you. I have tested this and it's working. All right, this is another one of the engagement. The second way to engage children in students in teaching mathematics, there's something I tag invisible maths. Now, under this invisible maths, we will have to look at the foundations. We will have to look at some concepts that every normal human being in this world should know, that when you have known it, you have a pedestal on which you work. I truly need to be fast, my time is going. Now. I will share, I will leave this thing, this uh, uh, slide with us so that I will really need to move further. The foundation must be in innovatively communicated. When I say innovatively communicated, I, I mean, as teachers, you know, we are creative. I may not know the way you will communicate this. It can be in song, it can be in drama, it can be in storytelling, it can be in, uh, in uh, group work, it can be in a uh, debate but let the invisible math be communicated. What are these things? First of all, every child, every student must know how to count. What we were taught is to count up, but teach children how to count down. When I teach one to three to 100, down in steps. I did several concepts in mathematics, quality topic, doubling. Doubling and halving. Doubling is to double numbers. The way they said money doubler, all right? Sometimes you could even use some physical example to talk about it. When I double one, I get to, when I double two. Create a game around doubling. Create a game around halving. Halving is to share something equally. Doubling is to add something of the equal size to itself. Is that okay? Now, everyone should know number bond. 
Now, number bond is a very simple thing. When I have 10, what are the two numbers that I will bring, I will bond together to give me 10? Every child should know that as far as 1,000. Try to create a game around bonding numbers. Children should know how to bond. So I am telling you what you can engage people in. This whole thing can be in using some of the things you've been using before now. You bond them. You, you use some of the things you know to teach bonds. And the other thing you need to know is patterns. Number has patterns. It's either you are adding to a number or you are subtracting to a num from a number. You are multiplying number or you are multiplying a number by itself. And this is where the types of number we have came from. Without knowing that there's even, there's odd, there's prime, there's um, quadratic number, triangular numbers, patterns shows, show students that I can, I may not know the name of squared number, one, four, nine, 16, but when I show them what was done before it happened, the pattern should be there. Now, I'm going to challenge us with uh, some things that may even give you money. Can we create games around this thing and engage our children? If you are the first person that create it, sell it, we will buy. Create games around doubling. Create games around halving. Create games around bonds and patterns. Create games around times table. Create games, great, and all these things, we call it gamification. It's a way of engaging children. Gamification, everybody likes to play game. Students, for example, they can play game. Either you make it uh, computer-based or a physical game. Create games around this thing, then you bond them. Then the last part I want to talk about is unmasking the hidden math. Now, there's something we call invisible math. Please, I want to give this assignment to anybody that is teaching mathematics anywhere in the world, that every child under your care must know some of this invisible math. They are affecting our knowledge of mathematics without our knowledge. For example, we know multiplication, but we either use one of the symbols to communicate it. If you check the blue part, if you can see my, can you see my screen? Someone yes. to answer me, all right. Yes. See multi okay, see multiplication sign. We have five ways of representing multiplication. So anywhere a child sees, a student sees this, you should understand that they are saying the same thing. A times cross, you put a cross in the middle of them, you are multiplying. You put a dot in the middle of them, you are multiplying. You put two letters without putting a sign, you are multiplying. You put bracket outside and one inside, you are multiplying. You put asterisk, you are multiplying. The same thing goes with a division. See the way we represent division. No one should be ignorant of this. They are called hidden maths. Everyone should know that every number is a fraction. It has one under it. Everyone should know that every number is a decimal point. There is a zero after, you can put point zero to every number, it's a decimal point. Every number, whole number, there's an addition, a positive number behind it. So it's a positive number, everyone should know that. You go through this, these are secrets that people don't know until they are told. And we ignorantly teach mathematics with the understanding that uh, these are things that everybody should know. I am telling you that. 80% of children know how to multiply, but they may not know all the representation of the multiplication. They may not know that every number has one as its power, it's an, it has an exponent of one. Not everyone knows that an X has an invisible coefficient called one. Not everyone knows all of this. So take your time to communicate them. Now question, how do I know all these invisible maths? They are in. Google, you can search them out. All these things, just type what you want. And I may be, if I have time, I will share with you some sites. You can find some of these things that you can use them as your world chat. You can use them for your delivery. And this whole student will be engaged mathematically. I hope you are following me. All right, another way yes. to engage, another way to engage this, to engage children in mathematics is memorization. All right, I, I love this part so much because I'm into music too. I'm into music and I have tested it, it works. Do you know that what we use as we, we call cramming is actually memorization. When you use wrong method to memorize, you will forget. 
all right? One of the ways I have realized that mathematics concept can be memorized is through songs and chants. I have composed many songs and it has helped me, helped me to teach my concept. The teaching of the song have done the work, the whole, the next thing now, I've engaged them in singing. Hope you know that everybody in this world loves music. The question has been type and style. So if you engage it in mathematics, you have done so well. Is that okay? So what I have done that has helped me. So don't tell me that it's just for nursery school. No, we use it for SS classes and it's working for them. Now, what do I mean? For example, there's a song I composed. I will use this thing for you. Now, when I use this, I will tell you what to do. Even if you don't know how to sing, you can use many ways to do this. I talked about parallel lines, types of line, for example. And I came to a class. I said, let me explore my musical acumen. When I talk of parallel lines, I talk of uh, intersecting line, and I talk of um, perpendicular line. What way will I use so that this big word will not confuse primary five two pills? I compose a song. Parallel lines never meet. Intersecting line makes V. Perpendicular line meets at 90 degrees. Wave your hands in the air with me. Now, while doing this, every part of them has been engaged and they realize that they will never forget. So the song, should I sing the song for you if you want to say yes? Yes. All yes. right, all right. Of course, I would love to hear your voice. Uh, all right. <laughs> Parallel line never meet. Intersecting lights make V. Perpendicular lines meet a 90 degree with your hands in the air with me. Parallel, intersecting, perpendicular with your hands with me. Parallel, intersecting, perpendicular. So now I realize that all the students were singing, even people that hate music were singing my song, learning my maths. Now the question becomes, what if I don't know how to sing? There are sites that teach mathematical song. Note this down, number rocks. You can write, check it out everywhere. Number rocks, every topic from primary one to primary six, there are songs on them that you can learn. If you don't know how to teach, you can bring the video and play for your student. Let them sing, it will do the teaching for you and they'll memorize every concept you need to do. Can we get, can I get a witness? Does that make sense to anybody? It's okay. So, yes, songs, yes. all right. Learn, use songs. I, I've composed many. I, I will share them with us when time permits, but I want to finish all I have for you to today. So you can engage these, these students with the communication of this principle through what they love. 95% of pupils, students like song. Now, if you don't want to sing, I'm not saying you should sing choir song for them, but you can sing a song, rap song. I realize that teenagers like, like rap. You can even tell them to compose, write it and give it to them to compose a song as a project. As they are doing it, they will come, they teach, they will come to the class, they will teach their students, their colleagues, and they will move. So the teaching has been done, has been communicated with a higher level of ease, all right? Now, the next thing is mathematical facts, strategy, hacks. Do you know that people are working on a daily basis to make teaching of this mathematics simple, all right? This times table that we learn that is very useful to us. Do you know that it can be taught in just uh, five minutes from one to 12? I have some colleagues in this midst, uh, uh, in our midst here. Mr. Theophilus should be here. If Theophilus is here, he can indicate. So one of my colleagues here uh, is, we've developed a whole lot of strategies that you can learn this times table that is useful to students. In less than 10 minutes, there were no time table from one to, to 12. I may not have enough time to do that now because of time. But you could Google them. There are hacks that will help you teach the maths. And these students will memorize all they need to memorize without cramming. Cramming. You know, cramming, with, uh, we said it's not a good thing. But we need mem memorization in mathematics. Now, the next one is use of mnemonics. There are some mnemonics that will help us understand mathematics. Now, for example, you know that it's, it's been difficult for people to know Roman numerals. You remember that today X is 10, tomorrow you think that that X is 100. But uh, I, we, many people have worked on this. I, I did some myself. There are some that I borrowed from my colleague and uh, colleague either in, the, in this country or in another country. So like some of this now, for example, I want to teach 
children or student, Roman numera. You just look for a, a mnemonics. What is a mnemonics? A word that helps children retain some uh, concept you want them, some steps or concept you want them to understand. For example, my dear cat loves extra vitamins intensely. No, you have dear cat. He loves extra vitamins intensely. Allow them to repeat this. So remove the first letter. You realize that you have called the seven letters of the Roman numeral. Now, you show them that the M represent 1,000, the D represent 500, the C, 100, L, 500, X, 10, 5V, and I, 1. Then you give them some other concept, you are done. In less than 10 minutes, you have taught this, and they will retain it. I am not telling you what is not working. I have not taught anyone that I've hated maths. So if you apply all these things I'm showing you, it will work like uh, magic. Is that okay? Another one, maybe you are in GSS, you want to teach uh, uh, expan uh, expansion, you have to bracket. There's something we call foil. Now, what is foil again? Okay, foil, first one, you talk about first term as F, outer terms as uh, O, inner terms, and last. Then it will show the picture. Which one are you multiplying first? Which one are you multiplying last? This concept is a child will retain it in his head and it will work. Look at this other one that's troubled many of us, uh, board mass or order of operation. All right, let me remove this thing up so that you see me. Now, we used to call it paid mass, but do we know that it has been researched and it's, even with board mass, we can make mistake. Now, we have reduced it to four words when you are dealing with order of operation. Deal with groupings. What is grouping? Anyone in the bracket. And bracket can happen in three ways. It can be in this, the first one, the second one, or the third one. After that one, move straight away to exponent, the one that has power or index. The third one, you are going to deal with multiplication and division at the same time, but you must start from the left-hand side. If multiplication and division comes, don't go to division, just check which one is in the first, the left-hand side. That's why the arrow moves from the left to the right. And when you are dealing with subtraction and addition, they are one and the same thing. Start from the left and to the right. If it's subtraction that start from the left, start there. When you tell children that we're going to use gems, they say, what gems again? Right, it's order of operation. All right, what does that mean? That G represent group. Group can come in braces, in bracket, in parentheses. Exponent is your index, is your power, is your, is your, and so on. You realize that children are capturing this. No dull children under this kind of atmosphere. And of course, we even know that no one is dull. It's because of the way we have been teaching them. Is that okay? Let's move to another strategy. All right. Sorry, sir. Um, because of our time, yeah. uh, I think since you promised to share this with us, yeah. uh, many of us should actually go back and because I'm enjoying this. And if I yeah. actually leave you, you can continue to tomorrow and I will All still right. be here with All you. Right. So right. I, I will appreciate if you can quickly move um, the slide. All right, right, sir. People will get to. Um, check through the slide over um, oh, afterwards, right. and then it's if there okay. is need for question, then we right. actually invite it's you. Okay. I'm actually done. It's about few few words now, few from now will be done. All right, all right, uh, thank you. Uh, I'm actually close to the last slide now. Making maths real, making mathematics real. What do I mean by that? Now, I have found out that everybody loves storytelling, most especially when the story is interesting. So I want every teacher to learn the art of telling story. Do you understand? We have to learn the act of telling stories. What do I mean by that? I have a, a concept. I can sit down and develop a story around it. From the development of that story, I will come into the class. You can even change your class setting. Let them to, allow them to comfortably sit down, all right? you come with this concept of storytelling. For example, I want to tell you a story and whoever knows the answer should tell me. I have two set of brothers and uh, these brothers, one among them is so stingy. It can only give to one and itself. And the other one is so generous. It gives to as many people as possible. Now, this one that is stingy, if I decide to make it a number, what kind of number is so stingy? 
that can give to only one and itself? Or what type of number is stingy, is, is generous that can share for many people? Before now, they know that sharing factors has been related to sharing. As in, I can share number for many people, that means it has many factors. But when I can share numbers for as many people as possible, we call those factors in mathematics. Use some simple words. Don't use all these big, big grammars that make, and that's why I talked about synonyms and uh, uh, what do I call it? The synonyms and the- uh, uh, yeah. You remember what, uh, this, we talk about those synonyms and uh, why am I forgetting what I just spoke about? Is that okay? So we, we use those words, emphasize on those so that when you bring this kind of story, then the student will start thinking to us, oh, there's a number that said it can only give to one, it has two factors. What do they call that number again? Prime number. Now, you talk about numbers that can share, it's the direct opposite of that prime number. We call it a composite number. So among the numbers that you know, how many? Which of the numbers can be given to one person and itself? They say two. You can only divide two for one and itself. You you'll be surprised at their answers. You will not have to labor so hard. Is that okay? Next is to create riddles and jokes with maths. You may think that this thing, will they bring results? Now, look at this thing, I, bring, I brought some. Parallel lines have got so much in common. It's a, it's a shame they will never meet. You know what parallel number means? Remember I taught a song about parallel lines never meet. So you create some slangs that they can use. Oh. Parallel lines, those guys don't get shame. If you even use some things that will make them feel free, I'm not saying you should speak pigeon in class, but relate, bring maths to life. Let your children feel that you are speaking life thing, not abstract thing. You said never argue with 90 because it is right. always right. Are you sure? Are you, can you see my screen? Okay, okay you exactly. can see all this. Okay, yeah, you can see. All right, so this, you can use them and I can tell you where you can get them. They are everywhere. You can check them up, but you must plan before, you, not when you get to class, you see this. Because engagement, pro, proper engagement requires settling down to plan. Which way will I engage them today? Which way will I engage them tomorrow? And you realize that these children will be flowing with mathematics. Is that okay? Now, uh, where's my slide? All right, now in conclusion, Remember that goals of learners engagement is to build mastery and make the learners creative enough to defend his knowledge whenever he is evaluated. He should master it enough to defend his knowledge whenever he's evaluated. When do they evaluate him? In test, in exam, in job, in WIEC, standard exams, international and national, all right? External and internal exams. The goal of this is to make this thing so simple. They have known it so that they have no need to use it for their life. They have no need to answer exams, exam questions, and they have no need to use it in solving problems. Now, the goal of every of your class is to tell the student what it can, the lesson can do for them. When I am taking, teaching them math, for example, I am taking percentages. I will tell them how they can use it in getting commission when they sell the, a house for someone. I'll teach them how they can use it in their simple interest when they save money. I will tell, and that's what we call uh, in education, we want to know what will this thing do for me? What will this lesson do for me? No child should go out of any class without knowing what that lesson will do for them. If they know that, they'll work hard to use it for their benefit. Most of our lesson is for our benefit as teachers because we teach it to get our money. But if the lesson becomes the benefit of these students, they will work hard to know it and they will rush your class. They will wait for you. I truly hope that with this few points of mind, you've been convinced that you can, you can engage these students with these few engagement principles that they will know this subject. Do you know that you can really apply this same thing in another subject? I speak, I use math because I am a math teacher and I have taught some other things using the same methodology. Please and please, it is workable. It is workable and it will make people understand you. It will make children love you. You've seen teachers that students love. You can be loved. You can truly be loved when you engage students with some higher level of this engagement principle. Thank you very much.
Okay. I like it. All right, ladies and gentlemen, can we please Thank keep you. it up for Mr. Ruben? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. We appreciate you. Thank you. Actually, with um with no doubt, he has actually done justice to, to that. And um he, he makes me understand what um teaching and learning is as a matter of fact. Uh I hate mathematics, that's the reality. But now with the logic and the strategic he, he has actually um, shared with us now, I feel like I should go back into school and study mathematics, actually. <laughs> so um, I believe you you have questions, you have answers. Please, if you have questions or, sorry, if you have questions, <laughs> sorry, not answers. If you have questions, please, can you signify by, um, the raising of, uh, of hand, the emoticon, just use the reaction, raise your hand. So just raise your hand if you have question, please. Okay, we have Mr. U Chena has a question. And, um, I think I can. No, it's sweet. Who is? Okay. Hello, Mr. Ruben. Well, thank you very much. I so much learned from this uh, mathematics class. And I'm also going to share the point I've learned with my colleagues. But I don't want to bore you with my questions. I think it will be a personal question. I don't mind right. if you can drop if you can drop your number on the chat group. Thank all, you. All right. All right. Um, thank you. I will I will do that. All right. I think I have one question to ask. Okay. My contribution okay. to what Mr. Roman has said so far. All right, Mr. Desmond, can you proceed? Okay, a quick one. Um, while the class was actually going on, my mention of um, educators teaching not for passing exams, but rather for problem solving, right? We intend to teach children that become global citizens in the future. Now, what I needed to harmonize in this is this. I used to tell people that education happened to be rebuilding on existing knowledge over the period of time. Now, I want to know because a, I had them. Can anybody stay here, Mr. Desmond? No, I'm not hearing again. I think he's talking about people. I want everybody to be part and parcel of it. So I just want to throw it back to the house. What is education? That's my question. Oh, so um, Mr. Desmond is throwing this to the whole house. And um, I think it's not uh, specifically directed to Mr. Rubin. So anybody yes, can actually answer this. What is education from your own perspective? We have less than three minutes for the question and answer section. So anybody can signify and um, unmute yourself and answer the question. Anybody going? What is education? Yes, can I answer the question please? Please, please, you can. My name is uh, Rachel Amakitas. So education, my own uh, definition, is the process of developing uh, cognitive, affective, psychomotor power of an individual. All right. Can you okay. hear me? Yes, please. Yeah, yes, you can hear you. Can you hear me, please? Yes, yes we can please. hear you. Can you hear right. me, please? Yes. Yes, we can hear you. Did you get Yes, we, we, we got it. Yes, Perfect. All right. Um, thank you for the for the um, answer to it. Now, from my Sorry, own Mr. Desmond. Sorry, yes, Mr. Desmond. Please. I think Mary is also raising his hand. Uh, hand rather. Mary. All right. All right. Mary, you want okay, to answer that? Oh, okay. I thought we were going around. Um, for me, education is a process of learning. For oh, Mary, okay. okay, for Mary, education is a process of learning, 
Uchenda, are you still raising your hand? Yes, so the question is to this one asked. I think in summary from my angle here, when you say education, is when somebody has learned a skill and you are able to use the skill to solve a problem, then that's education. Thank you. Simply okay. Okay, um, let me chip in something too. From my own end, education is a process of acquiring knowledge. And at the same time, is a means of transferring to the knowledge into becoming intelligence. All right. I, I think this is okay. Brother Desmond, if you yes. want to share more light on this powerful definition, we will want to learn from you too. Um, I think um, he's just um, preparing, he's coming up as the next speaker. And okay. um, I think he will be sharing uh, more of this for us in the next section. So Mr. Right. Desmond, and I would um, please ap um, apologize for cutting you short. And um, but in the next section during your period, um, your time, you can actually um, expand shit on this. So quickly, um, ladies and gentlemen, we want to do a brief um, teaser. And um, Mr. Ruben yes, sir. said something the other time. And um, he made, he actually gave a quick, um, a story that um, I, want to, I want to actually see if we actually follow the, the lecture. He said he has two brothers, one is stingy and that he can only share himself with another person. And then there's another one who um, is very generous. He can share himself with many other um, people. And he said, if you know the question, if you know the answer, please tell us. So right now, um, there is a gift for anybody that actually can answer that. And um, this, is, this is from the organization. If you can answer that question, please signify an answer. <laughs> Yeah, that's that's right. I can. I can. I can. Factors and composite numbers. Factors, Factors can share. Is that composite not my numbers. Hey. Factors can share. The stingy one is the composite numbers. Okay. Composite oh, number. Mr. Yes. The stingy one is the composite number. Okay. Yes. Then factors can share. Okay. And factors can share. <laughs> Is that correct, Mr. Ruben? No, no sir. Okay, so uh, that is a no. He said prime yes, he's giving it a try. He said prime number. Okay, oh, I thought compo no, maybe he should repeat himself. I didn't hear clearly. He Mr. said Uchena. Uchena, please. I didn't get you clearly. I said factors are the numbers that can share. The one that can share is their no, factors no, now. They, no, all of them are factors. There's one okay. that has two factors. The Mr. one that have many Mr. Ruben, factors. Can I see something? Yeah. Mr. Ruben, <laughs> yes. is a brain teaser. Let's okay. take the answer. Let's go respond to that. Sorry, I'm going to say something. Number two, number two, number two, number two can, is the stingy one number two. Okay, the stingy one, if no, the first one is the stingy one. Why the second one is the generous one? Uh, yes. Okay. So um, the stingy one is number two. It can only give to. I think um, Honorable Joshua wants to give it a try. Honorable Joshua, please. Yes. All right. Um, he said um, we have prime numbers. Um, which are the ones, the numbers that actually do not share. They are stinging. And then we have composite numbers are the ones that can share. Correct. Who is, who is, is giving it a try? Who is? Nobody has. Come on now, guys. Let's do this. All right. Um, I'm think, raising my hand, Mr. Timile. Oh, I can see that now. Mr. Uloma, please. Yes, I've been raising my hand. Okay, he said prime numbers are the numbers that can share. Mm -hmm. Are the stingy ones, rather. I remember he said two. Um, two can share one, I think. 
and then the opposite one. <laughs> are the ones that um are, are the ones that are general. I'm sorry, my voice. Is... The composite number are the generous ones. The prime numbers are the stingy ones. Is that your final answer? Yes. Final answer? Yes. <laughs> OK. All right, Miriam, are you saying something? Obviously, no. So because of our time, um, Mr. Ruben. Yes, sir. Can you give us the answer? All right. The right answer is a prime number is stinky. It gives to one and itself, while composite share with as many people as possible. So uh, Uloma is correct. And uh, the, the first person is correct. The uh, right honorable Josh is correct too. All right, right, Honorable Josh and um, Uloma, congratulations. Can you please um, drop your contact in the chat? The organization will get across to you and um, we have a, a token um, of appreciation to give to you. All right, ladies and gentlemen, um, we're proceeding, moving forward quickly. We are moving to the next lecture of the day. And um, this will be delivered by our powerful um, educator too. And um, he has actually shown himself forth before I actually declare him. And uh, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, I will just um, quickly read um, his biography and then he, he will take, he will take um, the floor. Ladies and gentlemen, please, Put your hands together and welcome with me, Mr. Desmond Chinwebu, an educator by profession, training and practice. He is a life coach, mentor and enthusiast, a teacher, a trainer, a mentor to many educators. He has a decade of experience within the education sector and has participated in many pieces of um, training and seminars on teacher development, personal development, instructional delivery and mental health, among others. Ladies and gentlemen, once again, um, I have the privilege to bring to this um, part of the podium, uh, the mindly, Mr. Desmond Joel, who will be taking us, or taking us through a ride on what education is, and at the same time, exposing us to what are the um, basic tools and components of classroom um, learning. Ladies and gentlemen, please give it up for Mr. Desmond Joel. Thank you. Your mic is muted. Oh, I think I'm on now. Thank you everyone in the house. I really appreciate it. Um, it's really a great privilege being in your midst today. I'm not taking it for granted. All protocol daily observe as we go ahead in the next segments of today's meeting. All right, we are still in um, the topic that says classroom engagement for improved learning at school. After our very first speaker that actually made the justice in terms of mathematics, and um, I really appreciate his teaching. It's really a wonderful one. Thank you, Mr. Ruben, if I'm not mistaken. Thank you for the wonderful teaching that you've actually put us through. All right, here I will be running through um, just a moment, please. All right, here I'll be running through a topic that I tagged um, engagement strategy that works. Are we there? 
Yes, we are with you. Engage, um, engagement strategies that works. Engagement strategies that works, right? So in this, I will be speaking so much on this because um, it's really necessary our pupils, our learners get to know more about this. So whenever they find themselves in classroom, they know what they are up and about. And then that's why I actually picked up this topic, engaging strategy that works. But before then, we are into the 21st century learning method. We are into the 21st century learning method. And I want to, oh, sorry, this thing has gone off. We can see your screen. Oh, okay. Off again. The 20, off again. Yeah, I can see that. The 21st century learning method. Now, when we talk about 21st century learning method, what do you understand by the word 21st century learning method? Can anybody tell me what he or she understand by 21st century learning method? The 21st century learning method. I want this class to be a discussion class. So we can always um, have our back at every point in time. 21st century learning method. Okay. Uh, I think this is a method that utilizes technology to make okay. um, learning easier. Okay. Any other person, please, before I go ahead? Any other person? Okay, in absence of none, I would say that when we talk about 21st century learning method, it has to do the, with the new technology that has been brought on board for educators to be able to enhance and engage the learners for better um, outcome in terms of their teaching profession. Now, this 21st century learning method is actually divided into three main groups, which is number one, we have the four C's. We have the flips, and then we have the what I call the MIT. Now, I was going to start with the with saying of um, the four C's. Now, we talk about the four C's. We need to talk about the creativity, um, the creativity mindset. We talk about the collaboration. We talk about the communication. And we talk about the critical thinking skills. Are we there? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. We talk about the critical thinking skills. Now, this is the four C's in education or in classroom. Now, when you're taking through children, we are learning, uh, taking children through these topics, you make sure that this four C's is being inculcated into everything you are teaching. For instance, I want to teach a topic that has to do with um, floating and sinking objects. First and foremost, what I think we should do is we need to group the children. This is where collaboration comes in from. Now, when you group these children, what are the things you needed to do with them? You group them, thereafter you pick up of the people you've actually picked, you pick out a leader from them. Now you group them, give them the topic. This is the topic that I have assigned to this particular group. This is another topic that I've been assigned to this particular group. Are we there? Are we there? Yes. Okay, this is the topic that we assigned to this particular group. Okay, now having done this, I think the mm -hmm. next thing now, you are going to give them a piece of paper. Now, within your own circle, within your own mm. end, brainstorm, brainstorm. Now, after at the end of it all, we need to have somebody that will come and present all of these things for us, for we to get to have the full information of what you brainstormed on. That is when we talk about the four C's. When we talk about the four C's. Now, thereafter, we need to talk about what we call the flip classroom. And a classroom educator that wants to engage children into 21st century method of learning, now we have to do what we call flexibility must come into play. That is number one. Number two, leadership must come into play. Number three, initiative, productivity, and socials. Now, the third one is called the MIT. Now, through which media are you passing this information to the children? That's one. Now, after that, what is the information you are trying to pass across to them? And what is the technology? The technology is the outcome. 
the technology, it is the outcome. So every child must get to understand this and every educator must also get to know all of these things before you can engage children into learning at school, right? So I want to quickly rush back to, uh, to my flip. Screen, okay. Okay. Now, what is classroom engagement? What is classroom engagement? Now, when we talk about classroom engagement. This is the degree of attention, curiosity, interest, and passion that student shows when they are learning to be taught. Every learner must have all of these things at the back of their mindset before they can engage themselves into learning. They must get to know all of these things before they can engage themselves into learning. And how can they get their, engage themselves into learning with all of these things? Because it's by the help of the classroom educator. The phone has gone off. So that's moon. Are you still there? I guess this phone is off. Oh my goodness. I because it looked like it was you wanted to charge it there when it was plugging it. Oh. I see. Oh, I think um, <clears throat> let's give him. Let's give him like um, two minutes to see if he's gonna cover. Okay. If not, we would have to postpone this section till tomorrow, the second um, day of this. Uh, but before then, um, can we also quickly engage ourselves in in, the, in these two minutes and? He made mention of forces of engagement in the beginning of his um, presentation. Can anybody remind us? Can anybody um, give um, answer to the forces? If you can get it right, there is something for you. Anybody there? Anybody giving in to trial? Joy, you have to unmute yourself. Rebecca, you have to unmute yourself. Unmute yourself and speak to us. Hello? Euphoria. Are you saying something? Okay. Hello. Yeah. Hello. I can hear you. Hi. Okay. Um. Initially, I didn't catch it, but I think I remember now. Um. Yeah. Good evening, everyone. 
He Did said, they, they. Um, collaborating, the four C's, collaborating, oh. creativity, communication, and critical thinking. Can you repeat that? Hello, can you hear me? Yes, yeah. We can it's hear you. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear yes. you. Yeah, I said collaborating, the forces, collaborating, creativity, um, communication, and critical thinking skills. Those are the forces you mentioned. Exactly. And um, that's just it. Um, I, she got it right. Please, there's. Um, Let's give it up for her. Euphoria, please send your contact into to the chat. Okay. All right. So yes, and also please, it is pronounced euphoria. Thank you. Oh, sorry. Um, I'm sorry about euphoria. that. Euphoria, yes. Thank you. Sorry about that. Um no euphoria, problem. right? Yes. You, you. Euphoria. euphoria, euphoria. Yeah. Sounds like a German yes. name. Absolutely. Mm, <laughs> it's an English name. Are yeah. you serious? Thank you. Yeah. All right, that's awesome. Um, Honorable Josh, I can see you raise your hand. Can you unmute yourself and talk to us? Sorry, my phone was just acting up. I don't know. Oh, okay. That's yeah. good. So, um, what is communication in the angle of um, education related um, what? What is communication and um, how can we engage in the proper communication to the children or the students to say? This to the whole floor. Can anybody hear me? Oh. All right. Um, ladies and gentlemen, I just it's a pity. Um, our uh. speaker will not be able to continue the presentation tonight due to um, due to the phone, the phone that actually um, went off. So we we actually hope he's going to have um, a better chance to speak with us tomorrow. And um, I must be realistic with you. You are going to enjoy every bit of it tomorrow because right now the little he has actually shared with us uh, are entrailing and um, tomorrow I want you to come with your mind open with your jota and um, with everything you think you can you can use in order to at least get um, yourself get knowledge from what our speaker will be dishing out for us tomorrow. So ladies and gentlemen, I really want to appreciate our first speaker, Mr. Ruben, for his time and for showing us, um, for giving us uh, out, for giving us uh, enough out of his uh, wealth of knowledge. And um, before we run off tonight, I would like to tell us all that the founder of McBain Foundation is right here with us. And um, we are glad she's able to make it down to the program tonight. Please, ladies and gentlemen, um, can you please give it up for Ms. Dokas Elisha? Ms. Hi, good Elisha. Good evening, Ma. Good evening, Ma. Good evening, Ma. Good evening, Ma. Good afternoon, ma'am. Yes, so good evening, good morning, good afternoon, irrespective of um, wherever you're joining us from. 
today. Yeah, it's such a privilege to have you join us on this training. We are so honored to have you here. Thank you so much for taking out your time to be part of this training. And I want to believe that it has been of great value for your time. And it was worth it. The investment is worth it. I would also like to remind you that um, this video is going to be uploaded on our YouTube channel. So you can always go back to it. And our resource persons are always available. You can reach out to them. Um, you can ask your questions. Actually reach out to them via WhatsApp or via the social media handles. They are very, very relatable and they are easy to assess as long as you're coming through VTT. So this is our first virtual conference, first um, virtual teachers training. And we are so glad, we are honored to be part of your growth process. And this is why we are doing this. We just want to invest. You've been giving back. You've been the one pouring out, pouring out your resources, pouring out your knowledge, dishing them out to the children. And we just want to give you back. We appreciate all that you do in the classroom and we celebrate the work you do. And I just want to use this as an opportunity to say thank you. We see what you do as teachers and we appreciate you and we celebrate you. Thank you for giving us the opportunity to be part of your professional growth process. And it is such, a, such an honor for us as an organization. I think I've, I'm repeating that again, but I just want you to know that it is an honor. And watch out, I just wanted to also watch out this space because more more resources will be coming out for you. Um, we'll be dishing out more resources in the coming weeks, in the coming months. And we hope that you will um, you'll take advantage of these resources we'll be sharing with you to better improve on yourself as an individual and also improve on the learning outcome for your students. Thank you once again. Thank you, Timilene, for doing such a great job. I can see our team members, the, the brains behind this trend, this, this amazing VTT, they are all on the call. Thank you to all the team members. This was super amazing. Thank you, Mr. Ruben. Thank you so much for honoring our invitation. Thank you for taking our time to be part of this. We appreciate you. We celebrate you. Thank you, Mr. Desmond. And I would also like to apologize for the technical issues we encountered. We are really, really sorry. We will work, um, we'll work towards... Um, who work to us tomorrow for better service. And we like to apologize. So just come ready, come, come ready tomorrow. Because I know Mr. Mr. Desmond has so much in store for us tomorrow. He has a lot he would love to share with us. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So over to you, All right, thank you so much. Um, our amiable and ever gallant um, E C E D. I call him um, Boss Lady, Boss Lady Dockers Elisha. So um, thank you, everybody. We want to appreciate you. Thank you for coming around this evening. And um, we promise tomorrow is going to be a better day. Um, same time tomorrow, 5 p.m., same Zoom link. We'll be here waiting for you. And uh, Mr. Des Desmond, who is unfortunately could not continue today, would be coming back the full force tomorrow. So they shout a whole lot to us. Uh, before before um, I round up this to, tonight, Euphoria, please, can you send your details, your contact details into the chat before I forget? So ladies and gentlemen, I want to say thank you very much. And it has been a nice time being with you today. I'll see you tomorrow, same time, same venue. And please come with an expectant mindset. Come with something you want to you gain tomorrow, like you have something to gain tomorrow. And um, on this note, I will say thank you again. My name is Timone Olajuwon, and um, it's a pleasure to be your host. Yeah, for this slide, um, someone just dropped, how do we get this slide? This slide will be shared in the group. Um, immediately we get it from the um, speaker, we'll share no, sorry, no, um, um, I'm sorry for cutting you. Um, okay. For the slide, if you're interested in the slide, I will advise that you try and register via the link so we could get access to your emails. And we are going to be sending the slide via emails. 
Okay. So if you are already a registered participant, you don't have to worry. You will get the slides. But if you're yet to register, I will advise that you register. Then we could get access to your emails and we send them directly to you. Thank you. All right. I think that's better um, for, for easy access and um, for future um, references. So thank you very much, everyone um, from this part of the world. I would like to say, Danke, tschüss, in, that is in German, but in English, thank you and bye bye. Bye.